Here at the Wadia Institute of Himalayan Geology in Dehradun, Uttarakhand, when the recent disaster in Joshimat happened, a team from this institute were rushed to the site to study the probable causes because they specialize in the study of geology in the Himalayan region. The incident has shown a light on the role the geologists play in determining how to use our natural resources in a sustainable way. But what do geologists do? What do the landscapes tell us about our past and our present? We talk to some scientists to understand the same. Until 1968, the Geological Survey of India and the Survey of India were involved in understanding several aspects of the Great Himalayas, but the task was too large to be managed, and an institute dedicated exclusively to Himalayan studies was set up in the year 1968. The institute took the responsibility of training students and young researchers across the country in different aspects of the Himalayan geology. providing state of the art research and laboratory facilities to the nation and publishing maps and research articles on himalayan geology we talked to dr kaushik sain who is a scientist and has been at the institute for 16 years on what the institute does to mitigate disastrous situations means we basically what we do for, as far as mitigation is, is, is concerned or the understanding is concerned one one very important part that what is done is the monitoring continuous monitoring we have a, a very dense network of uh, seismic stations or broadband seismometers across the in the himalaya and so we continuously monitor the kind of seismicity and uh, earthquake that are being uh, coming up and, and uh, in different areas and we can uh, classify some zones that these these zones have more potential to have greater earthquakes these zones are relatively safe and and different and also we know we also find out the what are the subsurface structures that are controlling this Uh, seismic activity that is one thing and as far as landslide also uh, uh, means the monitoring the most of the landslide prone zones in uh, in in himalaya are being uh, studied in different parts of himalaya both in eastern and western part of himalaya and we have we know that there are many zones which are landslide prone and and whatever agency Uh, means whenever the government or or the state government or any agency wants to have those information for from us we are happy to share our information <clears throat> so say uh, something like you know the recent events in joshi marwa the adjoining mm-hmm. areas mm-hmm. so what does uh, an institute like wadia does to you know provide the expertise when such we uh, means whatever is asked from from them means from means we are going we, we can provide it's not only about a, any recent means uh, uh, hazard or any past hazard many hazard has taken place in himalaya and many will take place in future means whatever is asked for them say for example if if somebody asks them ask us this just tell us about the geological structures of this place where certain maybe a landslides or a flash flood or a earthquake major earthquake has taken place we always uh, b- 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 go there and do some ge- detailed structural geological mapping and stuff like that then if somebody wants to know if there are present in any uh, sub surface in water bodies are there or not for that we can do we can carry out resistivity studies means uh, means all uh, facets of geoscience that are required to understand a past or future or present day hazard in any parts of himalaya we are pretty well equipped to provide our expertise Along with state of art laboratories the institute also has a museum The museum here is full of rocks mineral and fossils that form an interesting archive of the Himalayas past Some of the unique specimens here are fossilized dinosaur eggs elephant tusks and plants from millions of years ago We have uh, different minerals that are sourced uh, from the different parts of Himalaya we have some uh, rocks as well um uh, depending upon their nature of origin we have, like we have igneous rocks sedimentary rocks and uh, metamorphic rocks as well apart from that we also have uh, some fossils uh, which are uh, basically the re- uh, remains of uh, the organisms from uh, past uh, we also have some sedimentary rocks with different structures on them that are formed during the uh, deposition of these rocks all these rocks are sedimentary origin and they have some specific structures that are formed um syngenetic syngenetically uh, when these rocks were formed and uh, yeah that in that area we, we we have dedicated it to the fossils dr shubham choudhury explained how the institute conducts various outreach programs for school students he also went on to talk about his interest towards this discipline uh people uh, visit here on their own and we also have a uh, different outreach programs throughout the year uh, that are on the directions of government of india and we ourselves also uh, keep organizing different events that we uh, 
that's where we attract a young minds like students from the school and we can tell them uh, about different aspects of geology so that they can also take interest and they pursue geology i was also fascinated by the mining geology uh, i was fascinated by uh, uh, the process of ore formations and the uh, process of formation of uh, strategic minerals how do they form and how can be they utilized uh, for uh, the strategic uh, uh, point of view uh, for our country so later on my interests also evolved throughout uh, but uh, now as far as my uh, research is concerned i am working on the uh, su su subsurface rocks that are mantle rocks the scientists and researchers also highlighted the importance of studying the himalayas and explained the fascinating aspects of research carried out at the institute Uh, just before i have said himalayan mountains are the youngest mountain belt mm -hmm. and is still tectonically active mm -hmm. and we found each and every type of rocks here from himalaya to karakoram the oldest rock the youngest rocks so it is more fascinating we can do every kind of research related to uh, the geoscience we can answer how this uh, dynamic earth evolves if someone wants to know then we uh, we study all such kind of questions how this uh, that we see how how this 5 uh, to 6 km mountain belts from the sea uh, from the sea level how this evolves how rock forms and these are the fascinating questions that one can understand from this science i think uh, why do you think it's you know important to study the himalayas uh, yeah you know the himalaya is very unique and uh, in many senses first of all it is the youngest mountain belt and the highest mountain belt also so for geologists it works as a natural laboratory to understand plate tectonic tectonic processes and plate tectonics how two continents collides how uh, mountain belts how exhumation and erosion takes place how uh, weathering from one place and then it the material can be deposited at some sink these are the few geological processes that is really interesting and exclusive for himalaya and secondly uh, you know the himalaya is the source of most of the major rivers of Himal of of india and or most of the agricultural or the most uh, fertile lands of the indo gangetic plains are basically the material that is coming from the himalaya so from you know climatic perspective on agricultural perspective and uh, the himalaya is the most important uh, uh, geological feature of this country and then uh, you know it is a very young mountain so it is seismically very active so it needs to be studied in terms of uh, future uh, major earthquakes if there are any possibilities and, and not so that's why const continuous studying and monitoring of this erosion or this mountain belt exclusively is is very critical from our country's perspective there are multiple laboratories at the institute conducting research using cutting edge technology to generate precise results what's the significance of the work that you do here how is it applied to real life uh, Uh, yes uh, first thing uh, if you will coming to my topic then mostly my uh, work is on the uh, chemical weathering system especially whenever a river normally flows it starts to erode the system and whenever that er whenever that erosion takes place it consumes the atmospheric co2 as well as it releases the atmospheric co2 so uh, by using the different isotopes for example your strontium isotopes especially the lithium isotopes we can trace that processes ki how much exactly how much amount of lithium uh, how much amount of carbon dioxide is either being released to atmosphere or it is consumed to the atmosphere and for that analysis of the lithium lithium can be best analyzed using this machine and you know what you do here in this lab Yes, uh, this is Raman spectroscopy. It is a non-destructive technique okay. and which works on the laser. Yes. Basically, argon ion laser we are using, and there are different wavelengths for that laser, which comes in the visible wavelength like mm -hmm. five and four, and in the infrared wavelength also like seven eight five. Okay. So we uh, use our samples to analyze the mineral composition basically, okay. because rocks are composed of different minerals yeah. and different other things like fluids which are present in the form of liquids and gases. So we identify the composition for. different kind of phases which are present in those samples can you show us um, you know what what slide yes, yes slide looks like yes, yes. which we have prepared particularly for uh, doing the analysis uh, but uh, here in this lab there is no specific sample preparation is required we can directly put our sample but that should be flattened in surface mm -hmm. there should not be inhomogeneity on the surface like 
सो हियर लाइक यू कैन सी देर आर मैनी लाइट मिनरल्स डार्क मिनरल्स सो वी कैन आइडेंटिफाई द कम्पोजिशन फॉर एनी मिनरल फ्राम दिस एंड वॉट आर समर दूसेज फॉर दिस टेक्निक आई मीन वॉट कैन दिस एनालिसिस बी यूज फॉर लाइक दिस विल फर्दर विल हेल्प अस to do the further research like mm-hmm. firstly we have to uh, see what is the composition then we can do further analysis or we can interpret the things like uh, if we uh, study fluids then we can say what uh, kind of uh, fluid system was there mm-hmm. which was uh, present for the formation of that rock okay so like that way all right thanks yeah so much. reporting from dehradun this is shyam nandan upadhyay with simran sirur